guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and this is a very exciting episode because we are talking about the arrival of a new label in the physical media distribution game. This is Imprint. This is a, a new a new releasing label from Via Vision Entertainment. Via Vision is the company behind this. If you saw our review of our video review of Ghost Story, aka Circle of Fear, a 70s thriller, chiller, anthology TV show from producer William Castle and Richard Matheson. That was from Via Vision Entertainment. They are the company behind Imprint. And I really think the goal of Imprint is to release high prestige films on a high prestige format. And these are, like, I'm not gonna bury the lead, they're stunning. Uh, I, I have spent time with these movies and this is the second wave. The first wave, the five titles, this is, these are five titles. They're also numbered six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. First wave sold out like that. Second wave, from what I understand, also sold out like that. But there's hope. We're gonna get into like where you can find these, where to look for these. By the way, I'm gonna put all the links, all, all the links you need in the description of this video below here. Um, but I need to say, first and foremost, the, the coolest thing about these releases, aside from how gorgeous they are, aside from the quality of the movies, all five of these uh, are making a worldwide Blu-ray debut via these releases. And when you see these movies, like the titles that are in here, look, When Worlds Collide, No Way to Treat a Lady, A Place in the Sun, this movie won many Academy Awards the year that it came out, the Carpetbaggers and Night Falls on Manhattan from director Sidney Lumet. How are these just making their way to Blu-ray? It's kind of stunning, uh, but I'm telling you guys, this is an amazing line. I'm so happy to be able to cover them. First of all, I do have to thank Imprint Via Vision for sending me these titles to talk to you guys about. But look, there's a couple of ways we can approach covering something like this. There's the unboxing approach, which is like, hey, these came in the mail. Look, you can buy them here. Then there's the like, hey, I just want you to know these are available now from someone. So there, that's two different approaches. The third approach is the one I'm taking for this video, which is when I get something like this and it's so prestigious and it's new and I know I'm covering something that most of you guys will not have heard about, I have to do the work on these. So I have spent significant amounts of time with each of these movies. I've watched all five movies. I've, I've dug into the special features. I have really spent time you know i've done the work on these movies i'm not just talking i want you to know i'm not just talking about them because i've been sent them i'm not a billboard you know i'm talking about them to you because i think they're freaking awesome and i think that via vision should be commended for what they're doing with these releases so let's just go through them one by one and we'll kind of cover the actual movies themselves because listen presentation is super important but it's the movies that matter and i know sometimes we can lose sight of that you can it's hard to see the forest for the trees we collect these things because we love them in the first place and it's that love that's really drawing me to these these are fantastic movies let's start with when worlds collide this is a 1951 science fiction movie produced by george powell uh, George Powell was a, have you guys heard of Puppetunes? Think, think like Gumby, yes, you know, so like stop motion animation, but at a very high level. I mean, it was like hundreds, if not thousands of models that were being used for these stop motion effects, like during World War II. It, it's incredible. And I feel like the Puppetunes fanfare, you know, over the last few decades kind of died down. Cause if, let's face it, a lot of those people that were involved aged out, they passed away. It's being rediscovered. And George Powell's movies are being rediscovered. He came to the studio and he's he made movies in Hollywood and they're they're fantastic movies, a lot of science fiction stuff, special effects movies, high concept things. When Worlds Collide is well, here's the tagline. Planets destroy Earth. Don't bury the lead. Uh, this is Earth in Danger. And I gotta tell you, man, watching this movie this year, it plays totally different than this movie would any other year because like I don't think it's a spoiler the earth is going to be destroyed so that's the premise of the movie you have like a lot of scientists it's not a lot it's a small group of scientists you have some wealthy people who come together to build basically like a Noah's Ark rocket ship to take them off of earth because earth is screwed it's doomed and all the stuff that comes around that like there's limited space you're talking about the entire population of earth there's limited space on this this ship and 
all the backstabbing and the like the undercurrent of deception is like we're watching it in real time because of the world we live in right now like that's what i'm saying like a few years ago this is you know mystery science theater 3000 joke material which i'm never a fan of anyway but now in 2020 it's the world we're living in outside our window maybe exaggerated a little bit but the metaphor is it remains the same it's about how we treat each other under dire circumstances that's what this movie's about and it does it incredibly well i have to talk about the slip case i have neglected to point out how cool the slip cases for these are these thick thick cardboard slip cases with completely unique art on both the front and the back the blu-ray itself is already pretty freaking sharp looking it looks really great uh both are numbered just so you know my understanding is that this is limited to the first you know however whatever number they choose it may change moving forward these cardboard slip cases are limited but the discs themselves even though they may be temporarily out of print they'll bring these back in future pressings but these are limited to the first pressing that's my understanding if i'm incorrect on that someone will correct me but uh, so there is hope. I say that these are sold out and they're selling like hotcakes. I mean, they real, they're they they're gone like that. Um, there is hope that these will pop back up. There are some American distributors that are selling these. Uh, um, you know, I'll save that for the end. Let's talk about the special features here. Uh, there are, first of all, this is from an, an, a 4K scan of the 35mm original color separations negative. It looks so good it looks i can't believe how good this movie looks there's an audio commentary by barry forshaw and kim newman my man kim newman you guys know how much i love a kim newman commentary or just his involvement on special features love that guy uh 90 minutes of interviews with people about george powell they talk to the heavy hitters now these are all like archival interviews because most of these people have passed away um but we got in interviews with gene roddenberry the creator of star trek uh, Ray Bradbury, Ray Harryhausen, Roy E. Disney, uh, Wa Chang, Russ Tamblin, everyone who's watching the uh, the Al Adamson box set that's been released recently, you're getting a, a whole new appreciation for Russ Tamblin. He's here talking about his relationship with George Powell uh, and Duke Goldstone. So. 90 minutes of interviews. All the interviews are not about when worlds collide, but they are all about George Powell. And like one is not separatable. You can't separate one from the other. Uh, the second release here, number seven, is No Way to Treat a Lady. Fantastic oddball movie. There's a little bit, a little bit of walk in there. The fantastic movie from 1968. It's got George Segal, who is... <laughs> My joke is he's now slumming it on the Goldbergs. So many people will only know George Siegel from the Goldbergs. It's like, what's happening, Adam? But huge career, huge career, amazing actor. Here he is in all of his glory. He's in so many fantastic movies. This is like the George Siegel show. This is, I mean, he's great in this movie. Uh, Lee Remick, Rod Steiger. I get Rod Steiger has first uh, credit here. I, I, I credit him last, but. Uh, Rod Steiger just chewing scenery left and right, just munching up the scenery like nobody's business. Here's the premise of this movie. Rod Steiger is a very eccentric killer. I'm not going to give you any spoilers. He's a killer. The movie opens with him killing someone. But the, the premise is he's playing a game with George Siegel, who's the investigating, he's the cop, he's the detective who's investigating the murders. And he's... In, in toying with him, like Rod Steiger just pulls out all the stuff. He's doing voices. There's costumes involved. Like he's a different person for each one of these murders, it seems like. And it's it's a very, very, very dark movie because we're watching. Do I? I now, I was going to make a comparison. I'm not going to do that because it's not fair. Uh, but it's a, it's a dark movie. You know what? I'll say this. Seven. You look for modern comparison to this movie. It's a killer toying with the people who are looking for the killer, aware of what's happening and aware of how the process works. But it's got this sense of humor to it. It's got this playfulness, this over-the-top flair. It's, you know, it's almost camp. If you can imagine Seven with a self-aware wink, which arguably Seven has already, I, I don't know. But that's what this movie is. And it's... It's so good. It's 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 good because it's weird. You know what I mean? Like it's not 
A significant portion of this movie is George Siegel and his mother talking about like being Jewish in New York City. It's like, you know, you got to bring the girl home. Is the girl Jewish? Like, they're like, well, meanwhile, there's this guy killing all these people. It's super interesting. And I love quirky cinema. This is what I love. You know, this is a 1968 movie and it feels, you can feel like the auteur thing kind of coming. You can feel the tide is turning. You know, you have movies like The Graduate kind of help turn that tide where it's like, well, you know, we're making a commentary about this thing, but then there's all this other loaded subtext about what this means. And listen, it's, it's a fascinating movie. Let me show you the, here's the front of the, like beautiful, again, beautiful cardboard slip case here. There's Rod Steiger not holding back. <laughs> That's, just, that's a good summary of his entire performance in this movie. I didn't even talk about Lee Remick. She's fantastic in this movie as well. Uh, very, uh, look how lovely. That man is just sharp. It's just beautiful. You know what? I didn't, I don't think I showed you guys the insides of these. It's not reversible artwork, but it's like double-sided. So this is when worlds collide. There's our double-sided artwork for that. So you can really get, it's that presentation, you know what I mean? It's that attention to the prestige of these titles. Let me show you the inside of No Way to Treat a Lady. Even the title. It's about a guy who murders women. Yeah, it's No Way to Treat a Lady. This is George Siegel being all leading man there. It's a fun film. Uh, this has some cool extras too. It's got a commentary by, uh, it's a 1080p presentation. It has a commentary by uh, Kat Ellinger. So I think two of these have a Cat Ellinger commentary. The next one is uh, A Place in the Sun. This is Elizabeth Taylor, Montgomery Clift, and Shelley Winters. Um, the always, I feel like the always sympathetic Shelley Winters. Like, I guess it's not, maybe not always, but most of the time, pretty sympathetic. Um, this movie is like the awards bait of the entire, th like so many awards the year it came out. Was it 51? 1951. Um, it's not noir, but it is maybe kind of noir adjacent, what we would call noir adjacent. It is a romance, but it's about kind of, um, Montgomery Clift is, um, kind of a, oh, I don't even know if I should be doing this. It's a guy, it's about a guy from maybe the wrong side of tracks who's given the wrong side of the tracks. who's given a great opportunity falls for two girls he falls for the 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 high to do socialites and he falls for the girl that's on his level and he's torn between these loyalties um it's it's a really highly regarded film here's the is the interior there's our trio right there again at, at least six academy awards um 4K presentation or 4K restoration from Paramount audio commentary with George Stevens Jr and associate producer Ivan Moffat uh, this is a George Stevens film. Um, George Stevens and his Place in the Sun featurette, including interviews with Elizabeth Taylor, Shelley Winters, and George Stevens Jr. George Stevens, the filmmaker who knew the filmmakers who knew him, with Warren Beatty, Frank Capra, uh, and others, reminisce about the work about working with Stevens, theatrical trailer, and a photo gallery. Man, you got a commentary. You got multiple features with like. Just like with the uh, the George Powell featurette or, or interviews, like who better to talk about these people? It's great to have like fan commentaries and expert commentaries and stuff like that. It's also really cool when you get contemporaries of Frank Capra. Come on, you got Frank Capra talking about the guy. That, the, the, it's amazing. <laughs> okay, so um, number nine, this the Carpet Baggers, you guys. It's hard to pick favorites from this batch because it's such a high prestige batch of films, but I am going to go ahead and tell you, this is my favorite. Because George Pappard, that's right, uh, Hannibal from the A-Team, again, another guy like my generation, I think, grew up with Hannibal from the A-Team. I'm like, oh, it's Hannibal. And now every time, for, for maybe, for, I was going to say for decades, but maybe even now, some people see George Pappard and they're like, Hannibal, <laughs> but an amazing actor with a hugely varied career. Uh, Alan Ladd. So Western hero, Western stalwart, Alan Ladd, Bob Cummings, Carol Baker. You guys, Carol Baker. Once again, there's a lot of people who are discovering Carol Baker through the new uh, Umberto Lindsay Carol Baker box set that combines, the, it's the work that they did together. Carol Baker, this is probably before that. This is 1964. Carol Baker is amazing. She's a fantastic actress. Um, and she brings something, she brings sex appeal for sure, but there's, 
th th there's the danger element as well, which was used. Umberto Lindsay tapped into that very well. This is not an Umberto Lindsay movie. This is a um, uh, Edward Dimitrik movie, and it's a, it's I think it's the longest of the batch too. It's two and a half hours. The plot, in short, is George Pappard is the son of a wealthy, basically a tycoon, kind of a business mogul. Uh, he's never felt close to his father. He is the rebel kid. He goes, he's always womanizing. When his father dies, he finds himself in charge of the business and everything changes on a dime. And he becomes, you know, if we know what a carpetbagger is, uh, that's very much what this movie is about. He becomes all about business all the time. Lives it, breathes it, consumes it. As we see from the cover here, Carol Baker is just but a plaything to him. Um, it's not that simple. It's very complicated. But it's like... It's epic, man. It's like a James Missioner, is it James A. Missioner. It's like a James Missioner novel, you know, these sprawling thousand-page novels, you know. But it's about uh, this the son of this tycoon in the shadow of his father, uh, as he becomes, um, as he becomes something that he might not be. How about that? It's really fantastic. Alan Ladd is like his lead. He's his friend at the beginning of the movie, and then he becomes like his lead. Um, asset, kind of an actor who, who goes and makes westerns. There's a lot of meta stuff happening here. Uh, it's just an incredible film. It's just incredible. And again, because it's, it's 1964, so it has that seriousness, but it also has this, it's not a playfulness, but it's like, it's like a self-awareness. It's like we're, we're letting you, we're letting you see the strings a few times. This also has one of the best fist fights I have ever seen committed to film. Um, I don't even think I should talk any more about that. You got you, you got to see the fist fight. <laughs> it's an amazing fist fight. Uh, this is a commentary by Cat Ellinger as well. Here's our alternate artwork featuring Carol Baker. Aren't these just gorgeous? They're just. Oh, let me show you the inside. Once again, George Pappard, Carol Baker. You know she had, I think maybe a Marilyn Monroe. I say had, she's still alive, right? In in this era, she had like this Marilyn Monroe kind of a charm to her as far as the like the sex goddess thing. But there was a danger there that, you know, you know who's a close modern approximation, I think, is Carla Gugino. Carla Gugino from uh, Sin City. That's many, many things. I see the same thing in Carla Gugino. Very capable of sexiness and like bringing that bombshell quality but also of uh, toughness, of danger, of um, just like a real hardness, a real toughness that I think a lot of us respond to. That's a very interesting quality to bring to the screen because it's not common. Finally, the, the last release here, number 10, Night Falls on Manhattan, directed by Sidney Lumet. This is the guy behind Dog Day Afternoon. Um, uh, network. That's Sidney Lumet, right? Uh, incredibly prestigious director. This is a 90s film. It's got Andy Garcia. It's got, man, the cast list on this thing. It's uh, it's Andy Garcia. It's Ian Holm. Um, I think the easy one to go to is Bilbo Baggins from the original Lord of the Rings movies from the early 2000s. But also, probably more important, would be like uh, Alien, you know, going back to the 70s. We have Alien. We could go further back than that, but James Gandolfini is in this. A very, he's like third build, Gandolfini. Um, Lena Olin is great in this movie. And by the way, the James Gandolfini Sopranos connection, this is like three years, two years before Sopranos. It's right before Sopranos. The guy that plays Uncle Junior also in this movie in a prominent role. He's a judge. Um, another just really powerful film all these movies these are so well chosen that's the thing i love about what via vision is doing with this imprint label is that these are not like hidden gems they're not cornball favorites you know like, we love that stuff but i also love really good movies and i think that's something that maybe we don't talk enough about as a film fandom community we're not celebrating the really good movies enough we're celebrating the the low-hanging fruit perhaps too much. I don't know. I know sometimes I'm guilty of this. So I'm trying to use this as an opportunity to say these are just fantastic films. Andy Garcia is, again, not a spoiler. It's just kind of the overview. Andy Garcia is a young lawyer, like a young trial lawyer. And 
he gets personally involved in a situation. He is thrust into the spotlight, power, money, uh, fame, you know, and it's kind of a statement about corruption and where corruption comes from and how easy corruptibility can be. Uh, and it's, again, it's just a really, it's one of those movies when it's over, you're just like, Hmm, you got to think about it for a minute. I love movies that make you think, and when they're over, you're still thinking about them. What better compliment for a movie? Um, this also has uh, the 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 double-sided artwork. So, I again, this is my first hands-on experience with imprint films, but with films from imprint. But it's I'm so impressed. I mean, if we love this stuff, right? Like this is what we live for as collectors, as film fans. Let's put the film fandom before the collecting. Let's let's let that drive us instead of like the numbers on the spine. However, they've got us covered there both ways. That's what I love about these is because it is genuinely they're genuinely fantastic movies, but they're presented in like you know, I'm tempted again, I'm tempted to do comparisons to some of the other pre high prestige labels, but we know who they are. Um Oh, I didn't tell you the special feature. By the way, the special features for uh, Night Falls on Manhattan. We have a commentary with director Sidney Lumet, audio commentary with Andy Garcia, Ron Liebman, and producers Josh Kramer and Tom Mount, and a theatrical trailer. And uh, that's we're talking about like archival presentations of these. Come on, you got Sidney Lumet on the commentary, you got Andy Garcia on the commentary. These are gorgeous. Uh, they're hard to find right now. Let's talk about that. They're kind of hard to find in the United States. Diabolic DVD. I like to say uh, Diabolique DVD because the K gives it like this exotic Italian, you know, I feel like that's, they gotta, are they not leaning into that? Diabolique? Diabolic DVD, however you want to say it. They had at least some of these. I think they're sold out now. Um, you can import these directly from Australia from Via Vision Entertainment. I've sent a few people there. I've heard back with a little bit of sticker shock. Please remember, those dollars are Australian dollars. Convert to your currency and you might be surprised. Um, but either way, that's one way to get them if they are available. I think the bundles are sold out now. Again, not sure what's going on with some of the individual releases or the availability of this stuff going forward. But I want you to know, I want you to be aware of these titles. Uh, new stuff is coming in October, so keep your eyes peeled. I'll continue to update you guys through our social media outlets and in videos when I have stuff to actually hold and show you. But do your own due diligence as well via Vision Entertainment out of Australia and you can find, listen, they're shipping, they're shipping them all over the world. So it's not like you can't get them. But uh, for these movies, the only place in the entire world as of this video where you can buy these Blu-rays. No other Blu-rays of these anywhere. and. For those of us who love this stuff, you couldn't ask for a better presentation. Thank you again to Via Vision Entertainment and Imprint. Thank you for watching this video. If you're into these and you're picking these up, I would love to know what you think about them. So let's continue the conversation in the comments below. And remember, all the links that you will need will be in the description of this video. Guys, take care. Thanks so much. And until next time, I will catch you later.